I'm here with Viersen. We're going to show you how to use agency swarm with local models, specifically Llama 3.1. Thanks, David, for having me. Definitely, I think this is going to be a very requested tutorial. And we're going to go over the very basics so anyone can get started developing their own local agents with the latest Llama model. I'll try to ask the dumb questions while Viersen does the advanced coding. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, so basically, Olama just introduced the tool support. And this is a very exciting thing because by default, Llama 3 models actually don't support function calling. And the function calling is definitely one of the most important features for any LLMs in 2024 because 2024 is the year of building AI agents. For sure. And additionally, another repo that many people might not have noticed that Meta just released is called Llama Agentic System. So basically what they did in this repository, they equipped Llama 3.1 with two additional tools, which are code interpreter and web browsing. So in this video, we're gonna recreate the system using my framework agencies form. All right, let's go. By the way, if you want to make money with AI agents, then make sure to join our community. Because in the next 24 hours, we're launching the first module of the workshop. One of our members, Ryan, already proved the system and made $1,500 with his AI agent. So if you're serious about AI, make sure to join. The link is in the description. So the first step is to pull the agency swarm lab repository. So this is a repository where we add some cool examples. And the way you can do this is by first either just downloading a zip file or using GitHub desktop. Okay, so I've already pulled this repository on my local machine. So the next step is to create a virtual environment. You can use either Conda or VNF, or you can use cursor like I'm doing here and simply say like this, please create a virtual environment with Conda. So as you can see now, my new virtual environment is activated because it shows in brackets on the left, Astra Swarm. And now the next step is to navigate into the Astra open source Swarm directory. Here inside this directory, you'll find a special requirements.txt file. So now all you have to do is simply run pip install r requirements.txt. I guess let me ask you while it's installing, what were your original thoughts on Llama 3.1? Yeah, I mean, it looks exciting for the open source community. But again, you know, the function calling feature, as I said, is the most important right now in 2024. And by default, these models surprisingly don't actually come with the function calling feature. So I am hoping that in the future, Meta is not just going to be doing data processing for better responses, but also for performing actions in the real world. Yeah, I think I'm bullish on Meta because if you look at Llama 3, it only had like, what, 8,000 context window and they upgraded to 128K. So they're improving everything, I feel like. Yeah, of course. I mean, Zach already said that we're going to have the next Llama model by the end of this year. This is crazy. Yeah, which is exciting. After our packages are installed, the next step will be to adjust our Llama agent. So inside the Llama agent directory, you'll find the Llama agent.py file. And here, by default, it is using the previous Llama model from one of my tutorials. So all you have to do is simply change the model name to Llama 3.18b. So this will now allow this agent to use the latest Llama model from Olama. However, also don't forget that you need to first download it from Olama and run it locally. Yeah, so to download Olama, all you have to do is just go to olama.com slash download and then here select the platform of your choice. So let's clear our terminal and then after you installed the Olama, all you need to do is just run Olama run Llama 3.18b. So this will first pull the model from the Olama server to your local computer and then you will be able to use it directly from your terminal. So as you can see, I've already done this before, which is why I didn't have to wait and I can now simply send a message like this. But if you're doing this for the first time, it's likely gonna take maybe 10 minutes because yeah. the 8B model weights around five gigabytes. So after we've installed Llama 3.1B, we need to configure Docker. So the Docker installation is also pretty simple. I believe David, you've already shown this on your channel. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So if you wanna install Docker, just make sure to watch David's previous video. It's pretty straightforward and then jump back into the repository. Okay, so now basically we're almost ready to run the Llama 3 model on our local computer with my framework, but I mean, we don't wanna just run it like a plain model because it's not as helpful. You can do it from your terminal. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna equip this model with two tools from the Llama Agentic System repository. Okay, so the tools in this repository are located under Llama Agentic System Tools built-in file. Here, as you can see, Meta created a few tools for this agent to use by default, like Photogen tool, Brave Search tool, and others. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna just copy the Brave Search tool first, 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to my custom GPT created specifically for this framework. I guess we'll leave a link down below and then just simply tell it to convert this tool into agency swarm based tool class. And for those who are not aware of what tools are, this is basically the difference between AI chatbots, which is just an LLM and AI agents. You give it the ability to do stuff, which is called tools or functions. Right, exactly. So let's do the same with the second tool that we're going to use, which is the Wolfram Alpha tool. Yeah, I, I love GPTs like this. It, it's so simple to use and people always think that they have to remember all the documentation, but that's not the case at all. But yeah, it works extremely well if you basically have any questions during the process regarding agency swarm. If you run into any issues, all you need to do is just go to this custom GPT and paste it below. Yeah, this is almost like having access to you. Obviously not as good, but like, you know, when people don't know how to do something in Agency Swarm, this GPT will help them out. Yeah, exactly. So the way you create tools in my framework is you can either import them as standard Python classes and add them into the tools parameter, or you can simply drop them into the tools folder. So in this tutorial, I'm going to use the tools folder. All you need to do is just simply create a new file and then name it exactly as you would name the tool class inside. So the first tool that I'm going to add is going to be called Wolfram Alpha tool, which is why I'm going to create a file called Wolfram Alpha tool.py. And then inside, I'm just going to copy and paste the code from custom GPT. All right. So this file looks good to me, except maybe actually there is one thing that I would like to modify is that the API key shouldn't really be passed as a parameter inside the tool, because you know, those class variables here on top, they will be provided by your agent in order to use the tool. So we don't really want our agent to provide the API key. We can just yeah. use a environment variable instead. Okay. So double check the code. The rest looks good to me. So now we can proceed to the second tool. Copy the brave search tool. Again, make sure that you're using the environment variables for the API keys, double check the code. And once it looks good, all you need to do for the agent to have access to those tools is specify this directory using the special tools folder parameter. So this way, basically the agent will automatically import all of the tools inside this directory and we'll be able to use them when providing you with the responses. We can also do the same with files. You can simply drop your files under the files directory and then specify it when creating your agent. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned this because a lot of people want to use their own PDF files, Excel files, whatever it is with their local agents and they don't know how. Luckily here, it's very simple. Yeah, it's as simple as that. All you need to do is simply drop your files into the files directory and then specify it when creating your agent. That's it. Okay, now we are almost ready to run this system. The next step is to simply modify the Docker Compose file. I'm going to commit these changes and add them into the repository later. So by the time you use this, you can simply skip this step. Yeah, it'll be even easier for people to do. After that, just copy the env.backup file here. This is in case if you want to use some other model providers, like for example, you can not just use the Olama model, but in my framework, you can combine those agents together. So for example, here, I also have a Grok agent. And by the way, I think the latest Llama 3 is also available yeah. on Grok. So you don't even have to run it locally at all if you want. And also, I think I have a Google Gemini agent, but you're free to use any model that you want. So now the next step is to run the Docker by using docker-compose app command. Awesome. So as you can see now, our container is created. And if you get some locks, it means that basically you're now ready to run the final command. So let's go into another terminal. And here, all you need to do is simply run python agencyolama.py. Open this link for the Gradio interface, and then you can chat with the agent. And from your experience, is Gradio like the easiest way to add a UI to agents? Yeah, I think Gradio is great because I really like their SDK. It's very simple to create some, you know, custom user interface, and it is oftentimes more than enough for any internal projects. However, there are also some other alternatives. It doesn't really matter what you select. For example, there is Streamlead, and there is also another library called Misop by Google, which just recently came out. I'll need to check this out. Okay, so now let's try to say hi to our Llama agent and ask what LLM is it. From my experience, sometimes it messes up the version. Yeah, it can sometimes uh, mess up the version, especially since this is an only 8B model. Yeah, so as you can see, the 8B model can oftentimes hallucinate. For some reason, I tried to call the Wolfram tool, yeah. Yeah. By the way, what are your thoughts on GPT-40 Mini? Because I feel like this could be a big opening for a lot of people who have cost issues. Yeah, honestly, I love how OpenAI is moving in terms of efficiency, 
rather than just, you know, making larger and smarter models, because it's staggering that this model is 60% cheaper than 3.5. But from my experience, yeah. it's, you know, it's orders of magnitude better. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's one thing I have to give OpenAI credit for, because, you know, they, they haven't been releasing big, better models, but at least they're reducing the cost and making it really available for anybody. So now actually, let's prompt this agent. What are the top search results for our signature token, which is my name? Ideally, we're hoping it to use the Brave search tool and, you know, for it to recognize that it should search the web. Yeah, it did find my socials, but for some reason, I would put it like a unnecessary block of text. I guess that's just the problem with 8B models. For some reason, it repeated like the previous error, although it did yeah. show me the search results. So I don't think that it's actually gotten an error. Yeah, awesome. So now, as you can see, it stopped hallucinating and indeed provided the correct search results. Nice. So now let's try another tool and just ask it to calculate the square root of 729. And obviously, without these tools, LLMs are terrible at math because they see everything as tokens. For some reason, it outputted the results for the previous tool as well, but then it did provide the correct response that the square root of 729 is 27. And just from my experience, Agents This Swarm is by far the most configurable and advanced AI agent framework because, you know, Vyarsen is actually an AI agent developer and he's not doing it as some idea or a side project. He did it because he needed it in his company. Yeah, exactly. So I would say that Agency Swarm is one of the few production-ready frameworks and maybe even like the only production-ready framework because we're currently using it for many of our clients under our Agents as a Service subscription. So essentially we deliver agents using my own framework almost weekly and then any feedback that I have from my developers, we just add it into the framework. Yeah, so if you need finished agents, I'm going to leave a link to this below. And you can get Vyarsen and his team to build agents for you for basically any use case, right? Yeah, I think honestly, agents can be used for any use case. It just depends on how long it's going to take us to develop them. That's a huge part for a service is actually determining, you know, what agents you must do first. Because oftentimes if you try to tackle everything at once, or if you focus on like two complex agents, you might significantly push back the return on investment. Yeah. So if you don't want to build agents yourself, why not just get a professional like Vyarsen and use his service? Thanks, David. I appreciate you having me on your channel. Thanks, man. Appreciate it too. I have a lot more cool videos on how to use my framework if you want to try to build a more complex system on my channel. So if you like this one, definitely make sure to check out those later.